Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. Advice abounds for job seekers who are over 50, and most of that advice is over-optimistic. Pollyanna would be proud, but there's little job-seeking advice for people who are 70 or older. I've had a few such clients, and my dad worked happily into his mid-80s, and I hope to do the same. I'm embedding my thoughts on this subject in a composite story with takeaways I'll mention at the end. Richard was a lawyer at a university, defending lawsuits from students claiming racism to researchers wanting to keep the profits from their research. At age 70, the university, while officially not allowed to have a mandatory retirement age, had an informal way of pushing older people out. Although Richard still felt quite competent and continued to get good performance evaluations, he succumbed. He tried to rationalize that it was for the best. He'd have time to pursue hobbies and volunteer work, and he thought, I had a good long run. It's time to give young people their shot. But after just a few weeks, even trying pickling and canning, he was champing to get back to productive work. I'm too young for arts and crafts. So he capitalized on the strength of older job seekers, his network. Even though he was never much of a schmoozer, over the decades he did get to know lots of people. So he made a list of as many people who liked him as possible, even those he hadn't spoken with in years, and pitched them on the phone or in person. His pitch? The university encourages older people to leave, so I did, despite continuing to have good performance reviews. I wouldn't mind teaching what I've learned as a lawyer, doing some fee-based or pro bono work, maybe, or I'm open to anything that would use a good mind. You know anybody who you think I might speak with? or even whom you'd set up a three-way conversation with? Richard got a few leads, but typically leads require time before bearing fruit. So he volunteered at a public library answering people's legal questions. Legal questions. And in a few weeks, one of his connections recommended him for a pro bono legal panel helping low-income kids. But those ended up requiring only a few hours a week, and he had more bandwidth. So he perused ads on Craigslist and responded to a few entry-level job openings. The one he was most excited about was as an assistant to a semi-famous writer, and he was confident he'd get it. He was so overqualified, and he hit it off beautifully in his interview. But all he got was an effusive rejection letter. He thought, few people want to hire even a highly qualified 70-year-old. Then Richard learned about ReServe. It's a nonprofit that matches older people with government and nonprofit entities for part-time work, often that pays. And he got a, a 10-hour-a-week job as a tutor, mentor for college-bound foster kids. At 78, Richard had a minor stroke, which affected his cognitive functioning enough that he decided to forego the above activities. But after a few-week recovery, one of his friends, who would call to find out how he's doing, offered him a job as a clerk in his small clothing store, which catered to older men. By the way, in real life, my father, at age 82 and still healthy, after he closed his small store, got an offer just like that, and my dad held that job until right before his death at 86. Of course, it was difficult for Richard, who had been a high flyer, to come to accept life's inevitable decline. There were periods of anger and tears. But yes, finally, he came to calm acceptance that something, sooner than later, would end it. Richard reached 80, longer than the average life expectancy for men, though much shorter than for women. He then had a severe stroke, and rather than put his wife through some indeterminate time nursing him, and because California's right to die law only allowed assisted suicide if he clearly had six months or less to live, he pulled out the pistol that he had hidden under his bed, crept to his backyard, and shot himself. Thus, Richard died quickly and with but momentary pain. By the way, while little publicized, men commit suicide 354% as often as do women, with white males accounting for 70% of all suicide deaths. Takeaways? Often a new retiree's feeling that he or she will fill the time with hobbies, friends, family, and so on turn out to be untrue, especially for a person who's had a rich work life and for whom work provided core meaning to his or her life. The desire to do productive work can be powerful. In addition to having a lifetime of experience, an older job seeker's major advantage is having had the time to get to know lots of people, and they are the most likely source of paid 
or quality volunteer work. Also, websites such as Reserve, Idealist, and Volunteer Match are good sources of volunteer and even modest paying work. Acceptance of one's decline is one of life's major challenges. That acceptance, surprisingly often, comes at the end of a pistol. In any event, I'm Marty Nemco. I thank you for watching. Feel free to give a thumbs up or if needed a thumbs down, comment, uh, share, uh, or subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.